Hello everybody, it's Phil. I hope you're doing well. While I was at work today, Heather was off and she took the opportunity to go out with the Nikon Z50 and the 200 to 500 to do some bird photography. So without further ado, let's see what she got. Good morning, you guys, it's Heather. And um, I thought I'd try a little bit of a different place today for birding. Um, I'm here at Stanford Gap Marsh, which is known to have a lot of tree swallows. They have a lot of different nest boxes here for them. Um, and every spring and summer they come and lay lots and lots of eggs in these nests. So um, I'm out here looking for tree swallows this morning. I have found some. Um, in fact, you see this sign behind me. Um, I've gotten so many pictures of tree swallows just landing on this sign. Um, they're not really going to the next nest boxes this morning. They're kind of staying in this field behind me, um, hunting for bugs and such to eat for breakfast. But um, they sure do look pretty on that nice red sign. Um, so we'll go ahead and look at those pictures that I was able to capture now. Heather didn't mention it in her video clip, but she also got this beautiful photograph of an American robin with some prey in its mouth to take and feed to its young. She was mainly concentrating on swallows though. So here is Heather's tree swallow photographs on that sign that she showed us. And this one is a juvenile, probably just hatched this year. And look, here is a photograph of the juvenile tree swallow and she's got it in focus. And there's the adult on the left-hand side that has been banded as you can see. And it is not in focus because she was focused on the juvenile. And here is a more close up shot of the juvenile as it is singing there on the sign that made a great tree swallow perch. And now here is one more photograph of the adult, the beautiful, beautiful adult tree swallow. And I'm glad Heather went and did tree swallow photos because we've only done tree swallows once so far this year. So I wanted to take a moment and show you one of these nest boxes. You can see that one there behind me. Um, I did get a tree swallow uh, going up onto that nest box. They're kind of flying around me now, so I'll step away so they can feed whatever babies they have in there. Um, but they are super cool boxes with lots and lots of lichen growing on them. So they're really, really pretty in photographs. These beautiful old nest boxes have a lot of character. My only worry about them is that they may be falling apart and then these tree swallows may lose some habitat. Maybe Heather and I need to get some nest boxes and put them out for tree swallows. It's beautiful to see them and this one has some prey in its mouth that it seems to be feeding some young inside this birdhouse. Well, so far this morning, it is the story of birds that are blue. I left um, the Stanford Gap Marsh and came over to um, Summit Knobs Equestrian Trail once I'd gotten, you know, a few decent shots of the tree swallows. And I've made it over here, and the very first shot I got was of an indigo bunting. So uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at those indigo bunting shots now. Here are Heather's beautiful indigo bunting photographs. You know, I remember just a few years back, I had never even seen an indigo bunting, and now Heather and I get photographs of them fairly regularly. Just a beautiful little bird, great shade of blue with this bokeh background there at the Summit Knobs Equestrian Trail. And also, while Heather was there, she got a photograph of this dragonfly. It almost seems like she and the dragonfly were having some sort of a staring contest. I still don't know who won, but the dragonfly looks pretty cool. So I've come up to the bathrooms at the equestrian trail, and I was going to just see what was up here. Um, last time Phil and I were here, we found an eastern Phoebe nest right at the bathroom. Um, and nothing had hatched yet that we could see, but I was just looking, and there are some babies in there. So I'm going to go grab the camera out of the car and take some photos of these babies. Here is Heather's photograph of the beautiful Eastern Phoebe there in the nest. This was under the cover at the bathroom at the Summit Knobs Equestrian Trail. Not a whole lot of light there, and Heather accidentally left her shutter speed really high, so that explains the unusually high ISO. The Z50 seemed to handle it pretty well, though. Okay, so after I got those baby birds, I was able to get a yellow-breasted chat, I think, and maybe an Eastern towhee. So we'll look at those pictures now. Here are Heather's photographs of the yellow-breasted chat. Such a really cool looking bird. And we've gotten to where we see these pretty regularly there at the Summit Knobs Equestrian Trail, which is just our absolutely favorite place to go and do birding. You can stay in your car when you're working from there, which is really handy. And you can use your car as a blind. Here is another dragonfly that Heather photographed. You know, if 
you don't need a macro lens to do dragonflies and butterflies. Just as long as you have a telephoto lens with a fairly good minimum focus distance, it works really well. And Heather also got this photograph of a Eastern Tohi. This is a male. She's got some foreground bokeh, uh, some foliage that was in the way, but it still turned out pretty nice. Okay, so that's going to do it for me today. Thanks so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.